Keep it together. Just cover my face. Just <laughs> no one will even know. 
It might be better actually to have it up a little bit. How are we gonna know? No one's gonna know. No question. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. Would you please stand and sing with us this morning? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. Righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, corner strong, weak made strong, the Savior's love through the storm.
going to make you stand up again. This is too fun of a song to sit down for. Reading from Acts, chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen this vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course 
to Samarath, and from there to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we, were, where we supposed that there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. i 
you please stand and join us? Thank you. 
from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word and my Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Good morning. For those of you whom I've not yet had the privilege to meet, uh, my name is Andy Trado, and I've had the distinct privilege of serving these graduates in a variety of roles in our school system uh, throughout their education. The class of 2022, I'm honored and humbled to have the opportunity to speak before you today. You are officially the first group of students I have been able to observe grow from your first days of preschool all the way through the completion of your senior year of high school. It's hard to believe that over 15 years ago, I moved to Fairmont and had the distinct privilege of meeting many of you as young, vibrant, energetic three-year-olds at the start of your life's journey. But it was long before that when your journey into life began with Christ, long before you knew what this world had to offer, and long before any of us met. You see, God has been watching over you each and every step of the way, long before you were born and well before we first met. And parents and family, I'm sure you vividly remember the prominent moments along the way. The day your graduate was born, first word, first steps, first day of preschool, elementary school, and on to the junior-senior high school, filled with young minds building toward the possibilities of a wonderful future. Students, whether you realize it or not, not only have your parents and family been watching you this whole time, God has also been there with you every step of the way, watching, guiding, and providing direction, a direction that has put you in motion to live the life God has intended for each and every one of you. In his book, My Utmost for His Highest, Oswald Chambers states, if you are going to be used by God, he will take you through a multitude of experiences that are not meant for you at all. They are meant to make you useful in his hands. You see, our experiences shape us and guide us in, our vision, in the vision God has laid out for our lives. All of our journeys in Christ are different and unique. Some of us have already experienced divine moments where our connection with Christ was made crystal clear. And some of us are at a point where we believe in God yet are still searching, questioning, and wondering. All along your journey, you have had and will have experiences and moments that shape you and prepare you for a life you could only imagine, a life set in motion by our Lord and Savior. And at some point along the way, you receive the clarity you are searching for that sets a divine direction for the rest of your life. Your moments in life where you fully feel his presence will happen when you are ready, exactly as intended, right when God has put enough moments of learning in front of you to help you realize the full power of his love. 
You will have moments where you feel his presence in so many ways. And it will seem like every area of your life begins to take shape and improve drastically. Your overall health, relationships, your mindset, and most importantly, your faith will grow exponentially in these moments. You will start enjoying all the experiences in life more fully and all the way down to the mundane, simple moments that we often take for granted. Every moment with your parents, family, friends, and even strangers will present opportunities to grow in faith. What I've learned over the years of growing up and moving through adulthood is that Jesus never stops providing us with moments. Moments of peace, love, joy, happiness, and even experiences of anguish, heartache, and challenges that only help us grow and become better in our walk with him and each other. As we sit here today, you have all made it through elementary school and those awkward middle school years, then through the academic and social challenges of high school and becoming young adults, and now on to finding your way in this next stage of your life. While you are navigating the twists and turns that are to come, I pray that you continue to work on your relationship with God, your faith, and the importance of spirituality in your life, and that at some point you fully commit to following Jesus with the audacious tenacity that unlocks the enormous potential that is possible only through him. One of my favorite books that I've read is written by Pastor Craig Rochelle and is titled Divine Direction, Seven Decisions That Will Change Your Life. As you prepare for your graduation from high school, some of you are experiencing a greater sense of direction than others. The part of the book I want to highlight for you is chapter one titled Start, because graduation is not an ending point, but rather a moment that celebrates the opportunity for you to start solidifying the direction for your purpose-filled life. The book has some great advice for you as you take this next step. In his book, Pastor Craig reminds us, decisions we make today determine the stories we tell about our lives tomorrow. It's the small choices no one sees that result in the big respect everyone wants. You have the choice. If you'll open your heart, God will gently lead you step by step. God is focused not on your happiness, but on your pursuit of Jesus, which satisfies your soul like nothing else. Best-selling author John Gordon also offers his best advice for graduates. Where you are now is not where you are going to be. You don't have to be perfect to start. Just start. Don't be afraid to fail. Sometimes you have to lose a goal to find your destiny. You are here for a reason. You have a purpose, and you are meant to live and share it. You don't have to be great at everything. You just have to, you just have, to have a great desire to be your best and bring out the best in others. Ignore the critics. Just show up each day, do the work, and be you. If you believe your best days are ahead of you, they are. The best is yet to come. And lastly, stay positive. God has a plan. As you move into this next stage of your life, remember Proverbs 24, 14. In the same way, wisdom is sweet to your soul. If you find it, you will have a bright future, and your hopes will not be cut short. I would now like to close with a prayer for our seniors. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and the blessing of our graduates and the people you have led them to become. To the class of 2022, we pray that each and every one of you is able to live your life trusting that God has a plan and purpose for you. We pray and trust that your divine direction will come with a sense of clarity and purpose that allows you to love life and live it to its fullest potential, learning and growing every step of the way. We pray that you go confidently in the direction of your dreams, aspiring to live the life you have imagined and loving the Lord with everything you have. The Lord has blessed us with the ability to watch you grow into this moment, into the people you have become today. And we pray each and every one of you all of life's blessings on the journey ahead. And while you are on this journey, we pray that you invite Jesus to go before you, to guide you and show you the way, that you ask him to stand beside you, to lean on for wisdom and strength. We pray that he walks behind you to encourage you and provide support when you stumble, that he watches over you to keep you safe, that he lifts you up when you need him the most, and that he fills your soul with the presence of the Holy Spirit in all that you do. 
Lord, please grant these graduates the courage and confidence to know you have a plan for their life and that you will be there with them every step of the way. Amen. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate those words very much. You laid out something. I, we, we coordinated a little bit before this service, but uh, I, I don't think I could have planned that any better. So I, God is at work. I appreciate that very much. Um, so when we gather for worship here at Grace Lutheran Church, we, have, uh, we usually have a time where, where children come up. We're not going to do that today, but I am going to need some, some kids' help. So if you are a younger kid, and I remember when I was a younger kid, there was nothing cooler than the big kids. Uh, no matter, as, as, I, as I got older, when I would see like high school kids or when I, was in, when I was in kindergarten and I saw fifth or sixth graders, I thought they were the coolest thing in the world. So if uh, when, when we come time for the blessing, I need some kids help. So I'm going to invite you up. So I want you to think about that. If you are a kid out there that, uh, that wants to help out and help out with the big kids, I am going to invite you to do so. Will you please join me in a word of prayer? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm, I'm having a lot of memories about what it was like to sit in the pew at my home church uh, in Olympia, Washington, Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, doing exactly what these students are doing. Um, I don't remember much about the thing that happened in the service that day, but I was thinking ahead to what was going to happen after graduation. I was thinking about how much I was ready to do this, whatever it is that was coming next. I was ready to get out of my parents' home. I love my parents. I love my parents deeply. I love my brothers. But I felt I was ready to do my own thing. And I was excited about it. So after graduation and after summer baseball, my dad... Um, we loaded up a truck and drove 1,800 plus miles from Olympia, Washington to Lawrence, Kansas, Rock Chuck Jayhawk. And um, I was thinking the whole time, I can do this. I can do this. I am ready for this. And I drove, I drove down alone with my dad. My mother flew from Seattle to Kansas City and rode back to Washington with my father. And after they left, that's when things started to fall apart almost right away. They started to fall apart because I, I wasn't really as prepared as I thought I was. What I realized is that I didn't know really anybody. I was trying to play baseball. I was trying to be a good student, but I got injured. I got sick. And then I realized, okay, my parents and I, we have enough money to put together for me to fly home for Christmas, but where was I going to go for Thanksgiving? And suddenly I, and what brings this to mind is not only how much God took care of me at that time. But also you don't realize the impact of certain people in your lives. The, the, the people that Andy referenced, you will find support in ways as, as you leave your parents' home that you don't see coming and you don't even know the effect. So a big, loud Catholic family... The Volansky clan welcomed me to their house in St. Louis, Missouri for Thanksgiving. And not only did they welcome me for Thanksgiving, they said, come for spring break, 
Come for your birthday. Come for Easter. Come to St. Louis whenever you don't have a place to go. We will welcome you. And, when, and, and, and to speak to how you don't really know how God is taking care of you and, and how you don't really are able to put that in perspective, here's what I did this week. When my friend, Don Volansky, I mean, this is 30 plus years later, texted me a little less than a week ago and said that his dad died, I found myself changing my entire schedule and driving down to St. Louis this week to be with that family that welcomed me. And I know part of it is that when you think about your very best friends and how you want to be there for them, that's a big deal. It's a big deal to be a part of something like that. But also, to go down to St. Louis was a recognition of how much love God has put in my life. And I didn't even know it so much at the time. I mean, what I thought was really cool about going to St. Louis is, you know, you think about the people that you know, and you think about how cool their parents' jobs are. Well, my friend Don, his dad worked for Frito-Lay. He drove a Frito-Lay truck. I mean, is there anything better than being an 18-year-old and going into somebody's house and it looks like a convenience store in there full of Frito-Lay products? Oh my goodness, that was the best. I mean, if you want to talk about a feast that God has put before you, I mean, it's Funyuns in one hand, Lay's potato chips in another hand, and Doritos and Munchos, stuff my parents never would have bought, staring me right in the face. And I thought about all of those things and more as I drove down to St. Louis. And when I pulled into that funeral home about an hour before the funeral, I got hugged like I haven't been hugged in years. The story that was read earlier from Acts is a story about God's vision and hospitality. It's about a network that the Holy Spirit puts together that sometimes we don't even see that gives us grace and love when we think we don't deserve it, when we least expect it, and empowers us to do what we're going to do next. When you receive that kind of love from God's Holy Spirit network, the way that I was embraced, like I said, part of it was COVID. I hadn't been in that big of a gathering in quite a while where people are hugging me. But people will be placed in your life where you are loved in such a way that it's overwhelming. And when you receive that love, it's not just that you are loved. It's not just that you have a warm feeling. It's not just that you are supported. But I want to tell you, when you receive that love, this is how God sees you. And to know that, to, know, to receive, receive love in such a way you know that's how God sees you, that is a wonderful place to be. But it's not only for that moment. Because that moment that God equips you with in that moment is so that you can go out into the world, whatever it is that you do, whatever calling it is that you, that is brought to you, that you choose, your job in whatever it is that you do is to make sure that anybody that crosses your path knows that God sees them in that way too. Whether you're serving customers or teaching students or fixing something that belongs to somebody else, those interactions, whether you would say so or not, is to let that person know that they are loved in God's eyes. Today's story in the book, from the book of Acts is a story about hospitality. A woman named Lydia receives the love of God and then she takes that love and welcomes people into her home. 
So whatever it is that you do, whether you are close by to Fairmont or whether you go far away, take the love that you receive. And as Andy shared, you're going to face all kinds of adversity. And there are times where you feel like your tank is absolutely empty. And sometimes you'll need to ask. And there is no shame in asking, I need help. But there are also times where you will receive God's love and you won't see it coming. And it'll fill you up in such a way that it will overflow. And others will be able to experience God's love through your actions. I hope that you feel as you go from this place, as you graduate, that you say, I can do this. But you also may come, there may come a time, it may come tomorrow, the next day, or it may come months or years from, there, from that time where you say, not I can do this, but what am I doing? Be open to the Holy Spirit's network. There are all kinds of experiences out there where you will not only give God's love, but you will receive God's love. And at, towards the end of the service, you will receive a reminder that no matter where you go, God's love and the love of this congregation and the people who have watched you grow up, that love goes with you, and it never, ever dies. In the name of Christ, amen.
please stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift up in prayer these graduates and their families who have gathered together here celebrating this milestone. We pray that the transition from high school to whatever your calling may be for each of these young people may be filled with your grace and love and mercy. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather with us those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another. In the night in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. And after the supper had ended, Jesus took the cup, he gave thanks and he gave it for all of them to drink and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin, do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please follow the direction of uh, the ushers for communion. All, all now is ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
upon the waters, the great unknown, the deep may fail. And there I find you in the mystery, an ocean deep, my faith will stand. And I will call upon your name.
Come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Okay, I'm going to invite uh, Nikki to come on up, and I would like the graduating seniors to come on up. Come on. So, let's see. I'm thinking that we need to be on steps and up top, and yep. Yep. Like we're going to take your picture, sort of, but it, spread out a little taken, bit more. Because yeah. actually, your, your pictures are going to be taken. Yeah. So There's parents here, and they're going to want to get your pictures. So you might want to line up so we can get good pictures. Yep. <laughs> if you remember back a few years ago to confirmation, kind of remember that, how you had to line up. You'll do great. <laughs> Is that okay, parents? See some shaking their heads, yes. Okay. I just want to congratulate you guys. I will tell you, that you guys are my first class, 
as Andy has said, that have seen you start in Vacation Bible School and worked all the way through now to your graduating year. It is so exciting and it's so much fun to see how much you guys have grown since you were three and some of you even younger than that. But just a big congratulations to all of you guys and wherever you go, it's a path that you're supposed to follow. And there'll be some bumps and some, oh, maybe this shouldn't be where I'm gonna be, but just remember, we're going to be here with you. Your family at Grace will be praying for you. And even when you don't know, there's somebody here praying, I promise. So, okay, um, I need some kid helpers here. So if you wanna come up, I need some kids up here. Come on, come on down. I need I some kid helpers. The balcony. Yeah. I need your help. There's three coming. Come on. All right. So, are you guys ready to help? Okay, this is what I need. So, we need to let these cool kids know that they're loved. And, you know, we can say it, but it's even better to show it. So, we're going to give them a blanket, and I need you to bring them to me, okay? So, we're, I want you to go grab a blanket, and I want you to bring it up to me. Okay. So this is a gift that each of the kids will be receiving. Um, we started these about five years ago, just so the kids. Oh, had... now the kids start oh, coming up. Here we go. <laughs> just so the kids. They want to test it school, out. Okay. When you go off to school, you have something to remember that your family Ooh. at Grace is praying right. for you. And if you're having those tough days and you're feeling like you can't make it, grab one of these blankets and just cuddle under it, and it'll help you remember <clears throat> that we are praying for you here. Here you go, Delilah. Here you go. And if you want to put a blanket on a, on a senior, you can. Go ahead. Yep. You're more than welcome to. They may be scary, but they're still cool. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go, yep, go ahead and put it on them. They'll, they'll help you. Oh my gosh, these kids are so cool. <laughs> Got to make sure we get everybody. It's a good thing the church is a little chilly this morning. <laughs> Let's see, we got... Oh. You guys stay up here, okay? All right? You're not going to leave. I'm going to invite the congregation to stand up. And so, one of the long-standing tradition of the church is called the laying on of hands. But uh, we got a big crowd here. So I'm going to invite you, everybody, to extend your hands forward to these graduates soon to be graduates and I want you to pray with me gracious God we give you thanks for this group of young people for all the gifts that you have given them for making each one of them 
unique in your image. And we ask that the power of your Holy Spirit go with them, no matter where they go, whether it's close to home or whether it's far away. May they never forget by your Holy Spirit that your love is always with them. Hold them in your care, guide them in wisdom, and help them also to share your love with the world and help them to see that you have also made others in your image and that through that wonderful sharing of hospitality and Holy Spirit that your love may be known. Encourage them in grace and in faith. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, and let's give them a little bit of... Uh... And thank you, helpers. And I'm going to have you, go, you all go back to your seats. Don't sit down, though. Don't sit down. You're going to want to stand up for this last song. I promise. I promise. <laughs> Bonus points if you actually dance.
Receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Yeah. People are leaving. Just, just like a going. Oh, sure. Which one? My light. Oh. oh.